Page 470. 470. Footsteps of Jesus. Bring it up. Amen. Bring it up. glad to be in church tonight. We appreciate all of you being here. Folks are continuing to come in from the doors, and we're delighted to be in the Lord's house on a Wednesday night. We want to welcome our visitors tonight. We have visitors in the house, and uh, we have a couple from Virginia, all the way from Virginia. Uh, brother and sister Scarfy right back here on the right. Uh, been at the school talking to Dr. Love, possibility of a teacher there. So we're delighted you're here tonight, you and your wife, all the way from Virginia. And uh, told me today that he had had a bite to eat in our little town, right over here in Calvin. That's great. But he missed the best restaurant. He missed the best one. And that's the Red Rooster, and it's closed. And I hate it. Amen. But anyway, we're glad you're here. We're going to shake hands. Well, you don't have to shake hands. But I do want you to make our visitors feel welcome uh, here on the front, in the balcony, on the back. Let's make them feel welcome. You don't have to shake hands, but uh, Brother Chris White, glad he's here. Him and his family, Missionary to Japan. Let's make everybody welcome tonight, then we'll do another song in just a moment, all right? Brother Trey. Brother Trey, pull him down to the lower level. Glad you're here. Glad you're here.
we're going to do another great song out of our hymn book, number 473. Everybody get a book? Great, great old hymn of the faith. You'll enjoy it. And uh, my eyes are not the best, so, but I finally realized who that was in the balcony. Zachary, we're delighted that you're here tonight. May God bless you and minister to your heart. Let's stand all over the building, all right? Page 473. built for me in glory and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angel singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory and Jesus, my Savior forever, is on me and is on me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is dear Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Amen. You may be seated all over the sanctuary. Again, we want to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you, and we've got a good number for this Wednesday night. Some are sick, some are not well. We would like for you to pray for Brother Marty Herpel, who is recovering from a complete knee replacement surgery, still in the hospital, and then Brother John White. Uh, checked a little while ago that they wasn't sure about getting him home, but uh, Brother John White had a rod put in, orthopedic-type surgery uh, and around his hip area and all of that. So please pray for these men as they recover and soon be on the men 100% the Lord willing. And uh, also, at the end of the service, we're going to get Brother Landon Lancaster up here just for a moment to tell you about the upcoming Mountain View Christian Academy revolutionary run for this year. So don't let, don't let me forget that, and we'll, we'll have him to come up in just a little bit. All right, Friday night is a fundraiser for, I think it's either the juniors or the seniors. That's a Chuck E. Cheese's. You can see one of those young people and get all that information, all the other information is in the church building about some more fundraisers going on for the school. I want to announce these devotionals again. They're great books. We have them down front. They're free, of course. Uh, you're more than welcome to get any kind of literature you want, sometimes on the side tables, but get these this for the month of March, all right? And the Lord will bless you as you use those on a daily basis. I want to welcome Miss Six McMakin. God bless you, Miss Six. Glad you're here. I tell you, I appreciate the weather turning a little bit. Folks able to get out. And I told some visitors today that, as far as I know right now, we don't have anybody in the church, that, I, to my knowledge, with any symptoms, any COVID. And I, I, I give God the glory for that. I thank him. I really thank him. I mean it. I thank him. And because uh, it's still affecting churches. But right now, the Lord's been good to us, and everybody's doing pretty well. All right. Come on, Brother Cam. They're going to do one song. We'll preach it just a little bit. All right. I've seen the ruined lives of millions bound by sin. I have seen those in the ghetto with a bottle in their hand. Yet I know. 
know this could be me I could be in that same place but I'm washed and redeemed and I thank God for grace unworthy I found for I was lost as could be when his hand reached way down where once I had nothing I now have everything oh I thank God for grace that saved a wretch like me Worthy of mercy, yet I'm free and safe. Unworthy of royal blood that flows through my veins. If not for Calvary, where would I be today? I was blind now. Thank God. You say amen to that? Appreciate the song. God bless your heart. Take your Bibles, everybody. Go to Philippians chapter number 2. We've been here before, but we'll go here tonight. Philippians chapter number 2. Let me make a correction. Red Rooster is no longer in business. That's meet and three. That was a meet and three vet, uh, restaurant. But we also have a very, very great restaurant down there called Blue Basque Barbecue. And we praise the Lord for that place as well. And some of the folks go to church here. And we're glad they do. Philippians chapter number 2. I hope you have a Bible tonight. I'd like to, if the Lord will help us, I'd like to challenge the believers that are in the house. And that's hopefully everybody. Uh, with a Bible character that um, shines like a diamond in the night of absolute and entire selflessness, unselfish living. Look, if you will, we're going to start reading in verse 17. Philippians chapter 2, we'll start in verse 17. Yea, if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do you joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. 
For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. But you know the proof of him, that as a son with the Father, he has served with me in the gospel. Him therefore I hope to send presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. You have to remember that Philippians is a prison epistle. He's incarcerated right now in Rome, in Caesar's household, Caesar's uh, dungeon, Caesar's jail. He said, I, I'm trusting that I can come, verse 25. Yet, I supposed it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick, nigh unto death. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully, that word means speedily, that when you see him again, ye may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation. Because for the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life, to supply your lack of service toward me. Now, if you know anything about this epistle, or about this Bible character, you readily understand that his name is only mentioned twice in the entirety of the Bible. That's in verse number 25. I want you to turn the page and go to chapter 4, and I want you to look in verse number 18. Chapter 4, verse 18. But I have all and abound, Paul said. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you from the Philippian church an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Did you know, beloved, that these are the only two instances where we find this Bible character designated by his name, Epaphroditus. I want to say tonight, without hesitation and by way of challenge, that he is a model, he is an example of absolute selflessness. And by the way, isn't that, how, isn't that how you and I are supposed to be living our Christian life? I'm starting slow. The church, from what all we know of history and the epistles, had sent Epaphroditus, who was a member of the church at Philippi. They sent him to Rome. And they sent him to Rome by the officer with the gift, many believe it was mostly money, a love gift, that's referred to in chapter 4, verse 18, to help alleviate the physical needs of the apostle Paul. And they sent it, Brother Randy, by the hand of this man by the name of Epaphroditus. Well, he had every intention of going back to Philippi. He had every intention, Brother Blackwell, of delivering the gift, the odor of a sweet sacrifice, and going back to the local or the home church. But something happened. Could I tell you what happened? He got very, very sick. I've read and read and read. Dr. Love, nobody knows the sickness. It's all speculation. It's not identified. Brother Adam, it's, it, it's not, it's not um, that information is not given to you and I. So 
I don't know what kind of sickness it was, but I tell you what, what it did do, it almost killed him. It almost took his life. It, it was a sickness nigh unto death. Uh, probably fits pretty good for what's going on this day and hour. That some folks have got very, very sick and even at death's doorstep. But what happened was God touched him. Now listen, I, I'm not going to veer off if I can. God healed him. Uh, Brother Stoltz, the Bible actually says that God had mercy on him. And I love this right here, Brother Cam. Not only did he have mercy on Epaphroditus, but he had mercy on Paul. Watch this. He had physical mercy on Epaphroditus, but he had psychological mercy on the Apostle Paul. You say, but why? Because if he would have died, listen to this, while he was in Rome, Visiting Paul and ministering to Paul. Brother, Brother Trey, Paul would have had sorrow upon sorrow. You say, well, why did he have sorrow? Because Epaphroditus was sick nigh unto death. Had he passed away, Miss Malia, it would have been sorrow upon sorrow. And he'd have felt terrible, Ben. He'd have felt terrible because he died representing the church of Philippi and he died being a servant and a minister and a helper to the Apostle Paul. And so Paul said, thank God for God's mercy. And, and I'm going to develop that in a little bit. But I want you to see, first of all, this man's character. Look, if you will, in verse number 25. Look in verse 25. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, Watch these designations here. My brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. Three of those things were towards Paul. He said he's my brother, he's a fellow worker, and thank God, he's a fellow soldier. I say it like this tonight. He's a brother and so he's in the family of God. He's a worker, and so he's in the field of service. And he's a fellow soldier, so thank God he's in the fight. This is a man that knew what it was to serve, amen. This is a man that was absolutely uh, in step and in fellowship with the Apostle Paul, not only as a brother, but thank God as a fellow laborer. And I really like the title, a fellow soldier, amen, in the fight against sin, against Satan, and also set for the defense of the gospel. And again, I could stay all night on all of those designations, but I do not have the time. But those three things were what he was to the apostle Paul. But look what he was as a representative of the Philippian church, verse 25. But your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. He said, you know what? He was a messenger and he was a minister. Folks, we're talking about servanthood. We're talking about, we're talking about living for others. We're, we're speaking tonight about not looking on our own things, but every man looking on the things of others. It appears, Brother Kyle, that Epaphroditus' life was wrapped up in what he could do for somebody else. I wish I had a Bible reader, amen. I said it appears, Dr. Love, that his life was wrapped up in service for everybody else, in servanthood for the good and the benefit of his fellow believers. Oh, my, what an example, amen. What a pattern. What a... What somebody to imitate. You say, well, how does God tie all that in? Look across the page at Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 4, if you will. Look at verse number 4 if you want to see how it all ties in together. Look, not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. That's an exhortation to you and I that are saved by the grace of God. 
And I submit in your hearing tonight that Epaphroditus did exactly that. He didn't look on his own thing, Miss Bonnie. He looked on the things of others. How's it all tie in? Well, look, if you will, in uh, verse number 21. Yeah, I've got to show you these verses. Look at verse 21. Paul said, For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Paul said, I know a lot of people. It's going to get quiet right here. Paul said, I know a lot of people that their whole existence in life is seeking for their self and wrapped up in their self. You know, my four and no more, but not Timothy. Say amen, somebody. And not Epaphroditus. He, he, was, a, he was a brother. He was a worker. He was a soldier. Thank God he was a messenger. But then by the officer, he was a minister. He ministered to Paul. You know, there are people that believe that brother, uh, uh, brother Paul, that not only did he bring the gift from the church of Philippi, but he stayed there, Brother Chris White, and he ministered. Well, it says he did. He ministered unto the apostle Paul. And many believe that means he went out and earned more money at the expense of his own life, at the expense of his own life. And if it doesn't uh, connote that he went out and earned more money, then it simply means that uh, he found out what the needs were that Paul had. I said he found out what the needs were that Paul had, and he did everything in his power to minister to the apostle Paul. May God give us some believers. May God give us some Christians. May God fill this church. May God fill our hearts, and may God fill our minds with not what everybody can do for us, I said, not for everybody can do for us. Because I got news for you tonight. It's not about me, and it's not about you. It's not about my family, and it's not about your family. If I know anything about that Bible, if I know anything about Christianity, it's what we can do for somebody else. God have mercy on us for being so self-centered. Y'all going to help me tonight? God, God have mercy on us for thinking solely, primarily, too much about what's in it for me. That's the most awful way for a child of God to live their life than anything that's found in the lids of this book right here. We are a community of faith, amen? We are, and I don't mean this in a bad way, we are a brotherhood, amen? We are a congregation. We are, hey, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. And I tell you, I ought to be living my life like Epaphroditus lived his life. And you know what his life was all about? What can I do for Paul? How can I represent my church? How can I serve? How can I minister? He didn't want the limelight. He didn't want a pat on the back. He didn't want recognition. He didn't want to be elevated. I said, he didn't want to be elevated. You know what Epaphroditus wanted to do? He desired to serve, and he desired to minister, and he desired to be humble, and to be a blessing to somebody else's lie. And I want to tell you something. He was a blessing to somebody else's life. Lest I forget, let's read again verse number, uh, uh, yeah, verse number 29 and 30. Look at verse 29 and 30. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation. Here's the people you got to honor. Here's the people you elevate. Because for the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death. Watch this. Not regarding his life. Not regarding his life. Here's what I want to show you. To supply your lack of service toward me. Now, he wasn't fussing here. He wasn't, he wasn't rebuking the Philippian church. Because Brother Randy, in chapter 4, he thanked God for their gift that was sent by Epaphroditus. You say, so what was their lack of service toward Paul? It was Epaphroditus' 
personal presence. All of them couldn't leave the Philippian church and go to Rome. They had lives, they had livelihoods, but Epaphroditus, as it were, was the financial representative of the Philippian church. As it were, Brother Kyle, Epaphroditus was the sole missionary uh, to go out and to seek out Paul and to, and to do everything he could to minister to his wants. Amen. Thank God for his character. If you're writing that down, he was a brother. He was a worker. He was a soldier. He was a messenger. And thank God he was a minister. But that, that's all good and that's all wonderful, but that's not my highlight tonight. Could I be honest with you? Every time, every time I read the verses that I'm fixing to read, oh God, how it smites my heart. Oh my, how it smites my own heart. I want to show you not only his character, but I want to show you his concern. Now, you, now you're fixing to see, now I want to slow down. You're fixing to see the real heart of this man. We're fixing, Brother Emery, we're fixing to examine what motivates this man and what kind of person he really is. I want you to look not only is this his character, but now I want you to look at his concern. Look at verse 26. Look at verse, well, let's start with verse 25 again. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. Now watch this. Please listen. For he longed after you all. This is the church back at Philippi. He longed after you all and was full of heaviness. That word heaviness is an emotional word. Brother David, he was distressed. He was in mental, emotional, and spiritual anguish. Write that down. Emotional, mental, and spiritual anguish. Why? Why was he full of heaviness? Here it is. Because that ye had heard back in Philippi that he had been sick. Now look at me, everybody. Look at me. Let, let's, let's take the veneer off. Let's take the gloss off a minute. When we're sick, and many of us have been, is it not of the utmost difficulty to think about others when you yourself are facing a malady or some type of sickness or have been laid aside because of sickness? Back when I got COVID, I think I hardly didn't come out of the back room. I wasn't thinking about preaching. I wasn't thinking about reading the Bible. I wasn't thinking about worldwide evangelization. I'm just being honest. I wasn't thinking about baptizing anybody. You know what I was thinking about? Lord, I sure would like to feel better and I sure would like to get better. And I'd say something like this, the sooner the better, amen. The sooner the better. You understand what I'm talking about? But here's a man. Here's a man. He is so sick. He's hazarded his life. One author said it's as if he's gambling with his life. He was sick nigh unto death. And you know what made him sad? You know what brought him anguish? Do you know what brought him heaviness is the word? The word, yes, it is heaviness, verse 20. What brought him heaviness, Brother Steve? When he heard that they found out that he was sick. Because Derek, he didn't. He's so selfless. Y'all with me tonight? Everybody okay? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not missing the point, am I? He's so selfless that he didn't want to be the center of attention. He wasn't thrilled that he was the center of their anxiety and their concern, Miss Krista. He, he had anguish, an emotional word, Brother Scarvey. He had anguish. He had heaviness because he was worried because they were worried. It's the proverbial hospital patient that's in the hospital yet still worried about everybody at the house.
his concern and his compassion was not for himself, Nathan. His thoughts, his thoughts, if you want to put it like this, the burden that he carried, the burden that he carried, it was not for his physical infirmity. Amanda, the burden he carried was it's very possible that those folks back in Philippi are very anxious and very worried about me. And they were worried about him. They were, listen, don't miss this verse. It's one of the greatest verses in the whole book of Philippians. They were worried about him. They did not even know, Brother Hale, how bad he was sick. They didn't know it was nigh unto death. There's two or three phrases in there talk about it was nigh unto death. Brother Kirk, they didn't even know the, the, the dire straits he was in. All they knew is that they had heard. And by the way, I cannot find out how they heard. Did Paul get a message to them? Did another messenger come and go back? I do not know. I, I, I tell you this. Hey, I tell you this. I bet you Epaphroditus didn't dispatch the quickest postcard. I bet you Epaphroditus didn't send no emails out. Hey, let, me get, let me get real with us. I bet you Epaphroditus didn't blaze it on Facebook. I, 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 I bet you, I bet you Paphroditus didn't send a tw tweet out, let everybody know he was sick. I don't know how they found out, but yet they found out, and when he found out that they found out, it bothered him for them. I said it bothered him for them. That's selfless living. That's Christian living. That's, that's living with everybody else in mind, Amen. God help us. He became concerned over their concern for him. Far from being glad that he was the center of attention back home, Epaphroditus was sick with concern that they were worried about him. He could, watch this quote, he could not bear the thought of their sorrow and their anxiety on account of his sickness and his danger. I sure wish, and I pray for the day, Somehow I wish that at least I could get that desire. Right. And Brother Trey, not only get that desire, but retain that desire. That I'm not supposed to be thinking about myself all the time. Did you get that, church? I'm not supposed to be thinking about myself. People do it at church. People do it on the job. People do it in the home. People do it in the family. People do it with their relatives. People do it with their friends. Hello, hello. It's all, listen, it's going to get quiet. It's all one-sided. It's all one-sided. That, that, that's not Christian living. I'll tell you this, that's not Holy Ghost living. That's not spiritual living. And I'll tell you this, that's not Epaphroditus' living. That's not, that's, not the, that's not the example of Epaphroditus. Verse 26, slow down as we read it. For he longed after you all. Same word as Philippians 1.8 when Paul longed after them. And, and, and he, here it is, was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. Wow. <laughs> Ain't that amazing? Without Facebook, without Twitter, without, without all that other, they still heard. They still heard. Now look what Paul says about that. Verse 27, for indeed, Paul said, he was sick nigh unto death. I want to show you this right here. This is a blessing too. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Paul said he was sick nigh unto death. But God brought healing to Epaphroditus. 
And many believe, Brother Paul Stoltz, that he sent the letter to Philippians back by Epaphroditus. They think this chapter, this letter was sent back by Epaphroditus, all the commentators. They think that it was sent back by Epaphroditus. That's why he says, it's necessary for me now to send him. He was sick. God healed him. And in healing him, he brought physical healing to Epaphroditus and psychological healing to Paul. And, 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 and don't you like it when your anxiety and your worry and your fear, listen, your anxiety, your worry, and your fear, isn't it a wonderful thing when the God of heaven can relieve some of that? I mean that. See, here's Paul. There's so much in this chapter. Here's Paul. He's grieving because he's sick. He's grieving because he might die. Brother Andy, he's grieving because he's representing the church, and I'm going to have to go tell the church. Epaphroditus has already passed away down here in Rhodes, and he was ministering to me. That's why Paul said, God had mercy on me all. I love that. I love that. God, and by the way, he's given God the glory. Amen. And I want to tell you tonight, maybe you've got some, some emotional, maybe you've got some anxiety. Maybe you have some fear. Maybe you have some depression. Maybe you have some over, uh, ba- out of balance worry. Some great, great worry and great, uh, uh, basically, uh, uncertainty of what lies ahead. Could I tell you tonight, the God that showed Paul mercy is the same God that can show you and I mercy. I believe that tonight. And, and you, you know what? You know what blesses me, Brother Derek? God alleviated Paul's sorrow and the Philippian church's sorrow and anxiety by touching somebody else. Could I tell you something? God works in miraculous ways. We don't have him figured out. Say amen. We don't have him figured out. And by the way, you don't have to figure him out. You let him have his way. You let him work. He may may use somebody else you never thought about. He may do something you never thought about. He He may work in ways that you, hey, hey, that you never even imagined. Do y'all get in this picture tonight? Here's a brother in Christ representing a church in a foreign city, Brother Chris, a missionary, ministering to Paul. He's about to die. The church heard about it. They're worried sick. Paul's worried sick. Paul's already got sorrow. And guess what God does? Guess what God does? My, my. Guess what God does? He helps all of them all at the same time. I said he helps all of them all at the same time. Amen, amen. He touched Epaphroditus and brought him healing. By the way, he was soon dispatched to go on back to go back to Philippi to the church, and he did go back. Paul sent him back. And by the way, let's read that. Let's read that, all right? His, uh, his, his, uh, his character, his concern, uh, then you've got his commendation, then you've got his commitment. His commendation is found in verse number 28. I sent him therefore the more carefully, speedily, that when you see him again, you may rejoice. See, they didn't know he was coming back yet, but when you see him, you may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful, less sorrowful because I didn't want the church upset because they thought they might have lost a Christian brother. Does that make sense? I'll be the less sorrowful. Look at verse 29, the commendation and the, and the uh, uh, well, the commendation here, verse 29, receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness. Here's what God says about him. Hold such in reputation. Why? Because for the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death. Listen to this commentary. Not regarding his life, not regarding his life, he wasn't living. Hey, you know what? If he would have died ministering to Paul, it would have been okay with Epaphroditus. He actually, Brother Joe, hazarded, jeopardized his own life. Many believe that I read after that the more, watch this, watch this, Brother Trey, that the more he labored, the sicker he became. That the more he ministered to Paul, the worse his bodily ailment became. And that's probably so. That's why I was nigh unto death. But look at verse 30, because for the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life, to supply your lack of service toward me. 
I love all the verses. I do. I, I love all of them. Brother Jared, I could preach another 15 minutes on every one of them. But I want to reemphasize, I want to reemphasize verse number 26. I want you to look at it, please. Verse 26. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. Ladies and gentlemen, I set before you tonight. I lift out of the pages of the inspired Word of God a, a Bible character that is absolutely worthy of our imitation. A Bible personality, Miss Ellis, that deserves our attention, deserves our re-preaching it, re-teaching it, re-examining it, re-reading it. It wouldn't hurt us to get a three by five index. And listen, I'm serious, I'm serious. It wouldn't hurt us, Brother Landon, to get a three by five index card, write the words as big as we can get on that three by five card, put it right there at the speedometer, put it right there at your, at your, at your whatever you call it, the, 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 the dash, and read that every day. He longed after you all and was full of heaviness. He wasn't, listen again, he wasn't full of heaviness because he was sick. He wasn't full of heaviness because he was sick. He was full of heaviness because they heard that he was sick and he was worried about them. Noah concerned about them. That is selflessness. That is selflessness. May the Lord help us. I appreciate his character. I appreciate the challenge. I appreciate the conviction. I appreciate the example. Brother Cam, I appreciate the scripture, how it unfolds these details of his life. The next time you get tempted to live only for self, the next time you catch yourself, that's it really, that's it. The next time you catch yourself living only for self, let's think about this crown jewel of a Bible character who absolutely decided he was not going to live for self. He's going to live for the Savior and he's going to live for others. He's going to live for others. Let's bow our head. Let's close our eyes. Brother Spencer, how about stepping up here and praying with us, please, brother? And we're going to get Brother Landon up here. Close us in a word of prayer, Brother Randy, if you don't mind, please, sir. Father, we love you tonight. Yes. We're so thankful for your love for us and your blessings on us. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy to us, Lord. It's just good to be saved tonight. It's good to have a desire in our heart here in the middle mm -hmm. of the week to be back in your house with your people around your precious word. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the way it's been preached tonight. Father, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, not to walk out here and forget everything we've heard, but, Lord, to remember these things. And God grant them it. in our hearts, Lord, and draw up close to you. Lord, and be concerned about others. Lord, we live God in a, grant it. God we grant live it. in a lost and dying world, Lord, and you've blessed us about the death. You've been mm. good to us, Lord, but we live around folks that don't know a thing about you. And I mm. pray you'd help us, Lord, to be concerned about others, to be concerned about our church family, but to be concerned with those outside the church, Lord, that never have come to know you. Thank you for the message tonight. Thank you for moving here tonight. Thank you, Spirit of God, for moving in our hearts and up and down these aisles and these pews and helping us. And just pray that you'd strengthen us and draw us closer to you. Help us to be a better Christian, a better testimony for you. When we leave this place, back out in the world, Lord's where our Christianity will. God help us all. Lord, if we're going to be a light at all, it'll be out in the dark and a dying world. We thank you again for the privilege tonight to be here. God, we just pray that you be with our folks, Lord, and help, be with each one of them and bless them this week. Help us to honor you in everything we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your attentiveness and you listening tonight.